But it's going to continue. With us today we have Rick Furbish, and what's really exciting about Rick, I've heard his name as well amongst different circles, he's been in, uh, he's a cross-border Toastmaster. He started in Toronto in 1989, but it was his wife who brought him back, and we want to thank Kathy for that because I can't think of the impact that would have been lost had you not done that in your area governor year. He was President's Distinguished in his, in his Lieutenant Governor of Mark Marketing Year, he was number five in the world. In his Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, he was number two. And in his District Governor Year, he was number six in the world. And I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about that, but what's really great about Rick is he believes that the less serious you take the game, the more likely it is that you'll win the game. So please put your hands together for Rick Furbish. Okay, Tess, can you hear me okay? Yes. Is this working here? Tess, good. No? Yes, maybe? No. I'll take the lavalier then. How's that? Can you hear me okay? Okay. My goal today is to transform you into the person who feels confident that they can start a club. Now, you're the Lieutenant Governors of Marketing. And when I started, I had maybe started one club and it was quasi, and I was in charge of starting clubs. And I was nervous. And then we started a club and then I had some realizations. And things really changed. And in the three years from LGM to district governor, I helped start 108 clubs in those three years and we split our district twice. And I learned something special about the kickoff meeting I want to share it with you, and maybe it'll be helpful, because every single kickoff meeting we did, we, we started the club. No losses. Got it? So, here's what we did. There's a kind of a philosophy about starting clubs. We don't go in and try to duplicate a Toastmasters meeting. Because if you take a look at your public, who is your public? There are people that are nervous, worried about speaking, and they somehow either got cajoled or they decided maybe I should overcome this, but they're afraid. They're usually sitting in the back and they're hoping that they can overcome this fear. That's the deal. Your goal in that one meeting is have them have a win at public speaking and realize that this is the place they can fulfill that hope. Got it? The worst thing you can do is throw someone into the table topics they're scared to death, they get up and they freak out, they don't say anything, you sit down and you never see them again. So how do you do this? How can you make this happen? Well, first of all, if you take a look at the 10 tips for public speaking, the first one is know your materials, correct? And in the table topic, it's the worst thing you can do. Throw at a table topic because they don't know what they're going to talk about. Second of all, you want to practice, practice, practice. Well, they never have a chance to practice. And third is to know the audience, correct? So there's the problem. Here is a great solution. Here's what we do for a kickoff meeting. First of all, when they first come in, I have everyone take a three by five card, sit down, and oh, by the way, I'm videotaping this, I'm gonna send it to you, so you don't have to take notes. You can just put the keyboards down and just listen and enjoy this. Here's what we do. Yeah, there we go, much better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> Right, Kathy? Yes. She's videotaping. Here's what we do. We have them fill out a card. They take it back, and I ask them this one question. I say, would you write down something about yourself that's very unique, or something you're really proud of, or something, a, a special part about you that no one in the room knows about? Just write that down for us, put your name on it, and we'll collect it up. We collect it up, we forget all about it, they forget about it, and they get into the meeting. Now, the idea is to kind of show them what I typical meeting is all about. In a one-hour presentation, the first 10 or 15 minutes, you explain a little bit about Toastmasters. Then for half an hour, you do a typical demo meeting of one speech, one evaluation, and some table topics. And then you do the close at the end. Now, I've made mistakes in the past, and some of the mistakes were, number one, getting a brand new speaker. We always thought, well, it'd be good since they're nervous anyways. Let's get someone that kind of matches the nervousness and you get some first speaker or two speech and they get up there and so forth. Well, the viewpoint is, we are the leaders in public speaking. We want them to look up and say, wow, I want to speak like that. 
You want to give them your best shot, go in there, knock their socks off. Get them really excited, for starters. So, we start with a speech, but beforehand, we decide what we want to do is we want to get them involved. Now, the only way you're going to get people to do something is have them get involved. If they sit there like a lump and log and listen, they're not in it. So what we do is we have the audience do the evaluation of the speaker. So we can do a one or two person kickoff meeting. We don't need a ton of Toastmasters, but we'll bring them along so they can learn and help out. But you could do it yourself if you had to. <clears throat> but if you had another person there, they would lead the evaluation. And before we start the meeting, we talk about evaluations, how important it is, and then we're going to have you, the audience, help with the evaluation. And we give them ideas about this. So well, when you watch the speaker, watch how their eye movement is, uh, did they look at you, did you feel connected with them, what was the opening like, Why? we just give them suggestions to what to look for. And then we introduce the speaker. And I have a great speech I do. I have so much fun with it because it's the first time I gave a speech. And it really gets them nervous for me, and I get them in there and, and have fun with them. But whoever gives a speech, give them a great speech. Afterwards, then we do the evaluation. And the evaluator gets up next to the speaker, and we say, okay, so what did you think? And you ask questions. And what will happen, invariably, people will forget they're speaking, and they'll start to throw out an idea. And someone will go, wow, you're right. You know, and I also thought, and they start piggybacking on other people's realizations. And they start to realize this one thing, that they can have an opinion. There's something more to a speech than just sitting like a lump in the log and listening. There's something, why did I really like that speech? Wow, I, they, they made me laugh. Wow, he inspired me. I learned this lesson. And they start to evaluate what a speech is like. And you get them speaking, right? Why do we want to get them speaking? It's a question. Answer? What's that? Practice. Practice. Practice gets them involved, sure. And come out of their comfort zone so that they know that they can do it. Good. Come out of their comfort zone. Anyone else? Give them hope. Give them hope. Perfect. Okay, so we've got them now speaking a little bit. They're getting comfortable. They just heard a great speech. They're feeling great. And then we say, okay, we're going to play a game. This is a fun game. Here's what we're going to do. And I pull out the cards that they forgot all about. I say, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read one of these. And then as a group, we're going to try to guess who it is. <laughs> and on the count of three, I'll read it, and then I'll say on the count of three, one, two, three, point. Who do you think it is? Okay, and they start pointing and so forth. I remember doing this once, and I got this card, and I said, wow, I can't believe it. It said, I jumped out of a plane, my parachute didn't work. And I started coming down, It was, and I hit a tree, broke two legs and an arm, but lived to tell the tale. Okay, who is it? People are pointing like crazy. Then I simply say, will the parachutist please stand up? And it was a woman. And the place went berserk. They cheered, roared for, and so forth. And I just said, well, well, tell us about that. I didn't say, okay, you've got two minutes, and we're going to count your eyes and arms. And no, not a bit. I don't want them nervous at all. I want them comfortable. So I just said, well, tell us about this. Now, let's, put her, let's get in her position. The whole crowd just exploded. They were really excited for her. Here's something. She's told a story a thousand times everywhere. She's got this down cold, and all of a sudden she gets up and just starts to rattle off, and people are roaring for her, and she sits down, and people cheer her, and then I go, great, okay, next card. And I just read the next card. And now everyone's thinking, well, if they call on me, I better practice, 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 right? <laughs> so they're thinking, they had, okay, if they call. so they're already set up. It's not really a, it's not a table topic. We're taking the three things that make a great speaker, we're setting them up for a win. We don't want to show them a toast message. We want to give them hope. Right. Right? right? Wait till you do this. You will be thrilled. Wow. So, I get the next person. And now they've been practicing. I, I uh, asked a question. In fact, I asked a question that said, I'm pregnant. What's the line? <laughs> well, we know it's got to be a woman, but still. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we did this. And, there was a small, petite woman who didn't look pregnant at all, stood up, and the place roared, and she didn't tell him why she was three weeks pregnant or something, and she told a great story. Great, next, and we would do 15 or 20. We would spend most of the time getting them up. If they get up and speak one for one, they join Toastmasters, absolutely, without a doubt. 
because they've got that win. You want to give them a win. You don't want to give them a loss. I remember doing a kickoff meeting, and I, I brought someone in. She was very smart, Mensa or something. And she had the most complicated table topics. I couldn't even answer it. And oh, it's like, oh, it's just, oh, please. And somehow we still started the club, but I learned. <laughs> yeah, I learned, learned hard. But it was amazing. So, so the idea is you get them winning. Make sense? Now, the fun part is the close. The close, right? The close. I, I gave this presentation to the LGMs, and one of them was in here today. He went out and started a club the next week, correct? Yeah. Uh, right away. I was like, as soon as, the, let me work a lead. We're ready. Yeah. Perfect. So here was the close. This is fun. Now, here's the idea. You want to make things valuable, right? The whole idea of marketing is you, you create want. Someone wants something. So we're giving them, they, they want to improve their abilities, and they see this could happen. And then I go like this. I say, you know, when we start a club, there's a special member called the charter member, and they're the first people. And going down 50 years into a club, we have a couple clubs uh, 50 years old, they have a plaque on the wall with the guys' names on and so forth, the charter members. We make a big deal out of it. I even make uh, mention, and my wife says, don't keep telling that, they don't do that. But I say, you know, there's, there's going to be a plaque on the wall, maybe, with your names on it. So I make a big deal out of this. I say, now, uh, only the first 20 members can be charter members. And only if you've turned in your paperwork today. Now, now, I know you didn't come prepared, and we talked about the finances. It's not a lot of money. It's, you know, a cup of coffee a week. If you can't handle that, then don't drink a cup of coffee one day or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the problem with finances. So, so I try to get their attention, and what I do is I go, if you turn in your paperwork now, you don't have to have a check. Just turn in the paperwork now. You can be a charter member. You can give us a check next week. We, you don't expect to have money right now. But if you leave and you don't fill out the paperwork, no deal. Well, big problem is everyone says, well, you know, they're about to run up to be the first 20. Now, I did this at HSBC. True story. HSBC, I got the call about a week and a half beforehand, and they said, well, they needed 20, but they have 30 people coming. I said, no problem. Got a call later, it's up to 45 people. <laughs> Okay, right? <laughs> we show up, 120 people in the audience. True story? 120 people. We did this dog and pony show. We had so much fun with these guys. How many people do you think signed up at the end? 100 people joined Toastmasters. We started three clubs. We divvied them up, 34, 30, no, 33, 33, and 34. We got the officers together afterwards, and we closed the deal that day. And within a week, we had the paperwork sent in. It was a piece of cake. It works every time because you're giving them hope. Now, how many people feel a little intimidated? You're going into a corporation, and you don't quite want to talk to, you, you feel a little out of place. Does anyone feel like that? Am I the only one? A couple of hands. All right, good. I want to share with you something that I've done in the past. You try this, and you'll get rid of all the nerves and intimidation. Try this. I did this at a, well, I, was try, I had a club at a hospital. And after 20 years, no one in the club had anything to do with the hospital. So I finally went to HR and said, look, we'd like to get someone involved. Can I speak to a group? And they said, well, we've got a group of volunteer women, auxiliary group, that volunteers all year long, and we have a special day. They go to resort, and we take care of them. So there's 100 women showing up. The youngest is 50, the oldest is 99 years old. There's my public. Got it? So they get pampered all morning, and then they have a big lunch. And they're sitting at tables of 10 like this throughout the whole place, just about this size. And uh, afterwards, they have a doctor that gets up and drones on for an hour, and drones on and on. And the canes are falling, and the heads are nodding. And I'm up, I'm up next. And they really want to hear about public speaking, right? <laughs> so what do you do? Here's what you do. You love this. You're gonna love this. Try this. I guarantee it'll change your ability to speak in public. Oh yeah. So I said, well, I'm gonna talk about public speaking. They could care less, right? 
I'm going to talk about policy, but before I start, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to have 